clock. So as is our customary procedure, we start at six o'clock. So I will uh, call this meeting to order. This is the um, regular monthly Woodbridge Board of Finance meeting. I guess this will be the last meeting of the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2020. Um, it's a very interesting year. So hopefully it gets less interesting as we move forward. Uh, the first item on the agenda is public comments, and I'm assuming we have nothing in the way of public comments. Uh, so I'll move on to item two, which is Administrator Officer, Director of Finance Report. Tony, can you hear me? I can hear you. You have success. Thank you, Matt. The, um, so the uh, report for uh, the fiscal year and through uh, May is a budgetary surplus of $515,000. Now, since I created this report, we also heard from the Board of Education who indicated a surplus of possibly $90,000. Uh, that would be they would be returning to the town as a portion of their surplus. Uh, so uh, this would be closer to, say, $600,000 is the uh, budgetary surplus for the fiscal year. Because we have a $400,000 contribution to the fund balance, the um, <laughs> increase to fund balance at the end of the year would be roughly $200,000. Um, we, uh, another, uh, one thing I want to mention is uh, we're comparing a, an application to be reimbursed from FEMA for our expenses related to the pandemic. FEMA reimbursed at 75% of the state program that we hope will reimburse the remaining 25%. So uh, we are hopeful that we will receive 100% or close to 100% reimbursement of those expenses. It's mostly um, time related to um, cleaning and other uh, overtime related to uh, preparation in response to the pandemic. There is supplies, PPEs, cleaning supplies, and um, those are probably the majority of the expenditures. Um, so you said the total number, do you know? I don't. I, I am hesitant to say just because there's a, a number of items we're still waiting to collect, but it could be could be a hundred a hundred thousand probably. Okay. And I'm sure you have you know the departments that the different yeah. is for departments? Yeah, it's mainly mostly it's mainly the expenditures are mainly from fire department, police department, and um maintenance. Okay. So this, this group that have most of the expenditures. Did we have a breakdown from Beaker as to what they paid for that as well? They're, all, they're also applying for a similar, uh, mm -hmm. similar, exactly similar process. Okay. So um, well, we still have a uh, projected uh, tax uh, destined about $150,000. Uh, the uh, current year, as discussed earlier, that's still probably on target, maybe a little less, but that's pretty close. A uh, charge for services, Deficit of about $100,000, mostly due to recreation uh, fees and um, due to canceled programs. Mm -hmm. Interest income had a uh, sharp decline of about $60,000. And um, intergovernmental revenue showed a surplus of about $156,000, mainly due to additional ECS revenue that we did not budget for in the budget process. For expenditures, we have a number of departments with. Um, some uh, surpluses due to uh, a lot of student vacant positions. The selectum position had a vacant position, uh, which will have a surplus of about $40,000. It was a grant writer position, which was not filled. It's a common theme here. Some decisions. Uh, the registrar voters, because they were delaying the primary to August, will have a surplus of $23,000. The police department, surplus of about $30,000 again, because there's some vacant officer positions. On the budget. The building official, about $32,000 because we hired a part time building official. A public works, uh, request of about $78,000. Then you do a vacant mechanics position, which we did not fill, and um, some other savings in overtime and some um, materials. Uh, the only work place we have a, um, a deficit is recycling. Uh, recycling has a deficit of about $45,000. A lot of that's going to be uh, recycling for waste management. And um, well, a lot of that's due to recycling. Um, and a lot of that cost comes from uh, glass that is in the um, waste stream that gets broken during the process. Although I just today was on a webinar that um, there's a new 
company opening up where they're going to use glass for concrete. And so I think the idea is to separate glass from the recycling stream using concrete products so that uh, it can be reused and it would save a lot <laughs> in recycling. I want to say the tip G or the fee per ton is about $86 we have to pay. I'd say 20 of it is probably good in glass. And it would save us quite a bit of money. Was that, Tony, is that something to separate out, or are we not prepared to do that? Well, not prepared at the moment, but I think there's going to be a, a campaign to do that. So that, you know, people have to get used to not putting glass into the single stream recycling. It's going to be a learning process. Actually, that's kind of easy because at least we know what glass is and where it that's goes, true. whereas everything else we're never sure if it goes <laughs> in the single stream. So I, I would actually appreciate that. <laughs> That's true. Tony, could I just go back for a minute to the um, on the the drop in collections and taxes? Sure. Um, you know, one of the things our tax collectors and our town prides itself on is the high rate of collection. Mm -hmm. Does this impact? You know, I usually it's ninety eight, ninety nine percent. I can't do the math fast enough, but we're still pretty. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not enough to impact on our business because it's you know we collect forty six million dollars. Right, so it's not, not enough to really make an impact. You know, it's a few, few tenths of a percentage point, really. Right, that's what I thought. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, human services is a surplus of $50,000. They had a vacant, they still have a vacant senior center director position. <coughs> uh, recreation, um, although they had a shortfall in the revenues, has a surplus in wages, about 110000 mostly part time wages. The library, again, due to closures, a surplus of about $70,000. The benefits are um, expected to come in with about $60,000 surplus, largely due to a lot of the personnel and uh, position reductions that were done throughout the year. Um, that is a little lower than last month. We're starting to see some of the costs from the unemployment claims. So that, that, that'll reduce that a little. For those of you who don't know, we pay based on our experience, which is essentially a pass through. So whenever we uh, have someone that's laid off from the town, or we they able to charge us for that cost. So um, there's, we don't pay into it. In this way. We don't pay based on our payroll. So it's, at, the end of the, at the end of the day, it's generally a savings because other than this year, we very have very little uh, experience in the area of layoffs. Did we have many layoffs? I know uh, there were vacant part -time. positions. But a lot of the part time. Part -time. Yeah. We're able to collect our employment. All that is. So we're also affected by the, um, I guess, depending on how many people you lay off, there's a factor that gets applied to the municipalities. That's right. Yeah. Affected by that as well. Yeah, that's true, yeah. with, uh, with uh, private businesses or is it different, uh, different percentage or rate for municipalities? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Actually. Okay. I think I think it's totally different, right, Tony? I think we pay dollar for dollar, don't we? We do. Sometimes there's, there's, um, we get charged like if somebody worked here, I think there's a two year look back. Yes. If somebody worked here and then they move here and they go somewhere else and they're laid off from that job, they get charged a little bit because they were here, but during the, the look back, they were a little bit. The private businesses pay a rate of I think the lowest rate is 1.9 percent. The highest is 6.9 percent, and you pay on the first 15,000 of what someone makes. So it's that's the way employers, private employers, pay unemployment taxes. Goes into a pool and it's used for all the unemployment, et cetera, et cetera. So um, there, there's concerns though that when when you when the governments borrow money from the federal government. They assess, the, they assess additional unemployment fees at the end of the year, and that can get very, very expensive and very detrimental to small businesses. So I know there's a, I heard um, Lamont say that he's talked to Washington about making it a grant and not doing that to the employers because it's very expensive when they do that. So we'll see, we'll see, you know, unemployment is flying out of the uh, checkbooks like you know, we've never seen it before. Uh, the six hundred dollars that everybody's getting, and, um, while it's definitely someone who deals with small businesses, it's detrimental because people don't want to come back to work. It's true what you hear, 
uh, clients of mine are calling their people back and they're saying, no, 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 we're not going back to make $350 a week when I'm collecting 900. So it's a, definitely a, a problem. Now, technically you're supposed to report them to unemployment and they, they lose all their unemployment, but I don't know if anybody's doing that. So. Right, but so just to touch base on that, if, if you get called back, yeah. you basically have to come back or lose your benefit. Well, if your employer reports you to the state, in other words, right, right. if they call up Joe Jones and say, come back to work, and he says no, and then they call another person and don't report Joe Jones, then nothing happens to them. I'm sure there are people reporting. Is there, if, you, if you look in the paper, everybody's advertising for help because they can't get their people to come back to work. That $600 was a nice thought, but it's really hurt, it's really hurt the opportunity for people. It should have been floating a, you know, a low amount to a higher amount, but to just give someone, someone making you know, three hundred dollars a week who's collecting one hundred. You give them seven fifty uh, by adding that six hundred to it. Really, really hurt. Right, but, but is that still in uh, adverse? So July twenty fifth. But there's people watching who want to extend it, and they do that. It's going to be tough. But I'm saying, would that still adversely affect the employer? Yeah, of course it will. Oh, I don't think no. They're not that six hundred. The federal government's picking that up, but. It's affecting the employer because they can't get their people to come back to work. You know, you sit at home collecting 900 instead of going to work 40 hours and making 450. So, you know, you stay where your people are coming from. So it's been a real, it's been a real problem. So. One thing I want to say, obviously, is um, we're we're here on June uh, 18th. There's a strong possibility. I know the Board of Ed is very very possibly their surplus may grow, and if they do, they said they give it back to us. If I remember correctly. And the same thing with the town. You don't know until you start closing the accounts. You could you could realize more surplus too. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Anything else for Tony? Woodbridge Board of Ed monthly report. Um, Tom, you want to go over that? Your your. Yeah, I can. <clears throat> I can go over it. I attended that meeting on uh, last week, so I can go over it when I do the. Oh, yeah, he says, Tom, I wasn't able to make that meeting. It's, uh, yeah, it was kind of short notice, but but luckily I was able to. So. Okay. All right, Tony, update on uh, refinancing debt at the country club. Oh, I do. Oh, okay. So um, the um, town has uh, notes maturing uh, in July for $4.2 uh, million. And um, we have a principal pay down that we have to make. Uh, when, when we have to, so it's a little less than four million. Like it's a three three point eight change, and um, we have to either issue notes because we, you know we don't have the three point eight million dollars, but we just pay them off, or we can issue bonds. If we issue notes, then um, they. Um, mature in uh, most at most a year, and you have to issue notes again. So um, what we've uh, discussed is issuing bonds this year because rates are at unbelievably low levels. I saw Brantford just sold notes at 0.04 percent. I mean, that's <laughs> unbelievable. 0.04 percent. Right, that's what they're getting. Right, it's under a percent. Oh, you know, that's under a percent. So um, we've decided that we're going to issue bonds. So the question is, has always been taxability of the of the bonds. And in other words, um, if you use it for a uh, purpose other than a municipal purpose, the um, issuer or the holder of the uh, of the note of the bonds have to pay uh, taxes on their interest earnings. So those are taxable, and the rates are a little higher. Sure. Taxes uh, and then there's tax exempt. So uh, the case of the country club, it all has to do with the um, portion of the property that um, we, if we can ever considered selling a portion of the property, then that portion would be taxable. So what we decided to do is, in this particular scenario, issue tax exempt bonds for two thirds of the of the the, um, the, the, part, the amount that's outstanding, which would be 2.565 million. Those are about one and a quarter percent for uh, 11 years. 
and then issue taxable bonds for the remainder, which is 1.285 million. Those are about 1.75 percent, 1.7. So the weighted average is about 1.4 percent. Um, and this way, that preserves the ability, should the town want to, to sell a portion of the property. If we had done all tax exempt bonds, then if we had sold a portion of the property, there would be possible issues with the IRS. Or, um, that's the discussion that took place with um, the analysis decision. Um, Tony, if I'm sure you made the right decision, but I'm just curious if we had done the or if we did do the entire property as tax exempt, if we sold a portion, couldn't we just pay off the bond and if you issue not bonds, have any penalty? If you know if you issue bonds, then um, once you issue bonds, you have to pay them through the maturity of the bond. In other words, they wouldn't be callable probably okay. seven or eight years. Okay. So um, that's why we did notes. Because then, when the notes mature, you just pay. But because you know, such a, the market's so low right now, we, we want to take the opportunity to issue bonds so that we can lock in these very low rates. And why is our um, our governmental purpose bonds? Why are we higher than Brantford? Because Brantford did notes. Oh, they did notes. Okay. Right. All right. Thanks. Those are tactical yeah. notes. Right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Right. Okay. Anything else on that? So that's a, um, a you know when we discussed it, I think um, you know we felt it would be helpful if you all heard about it and just either had a consensus if that was the right way to go or if there's any questions or concerns, um, bring those up. So what do you want us to do? You want us to take a vote? Yeah, I think that'd be helpful. Okay. Just put it in the record so that if it ever comes up, you know. That, just, just if I might add, the Board of Selectmen voted unanimously to do this last week. Okay. So what's the okay. motion that we, um, we re refinance the debt of the Woodbridge Country Club? Sorry, I don't have those numbers handy, but one third uh, being uh, taxable and two thirds being non taxable. That's correct. I second the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? I have a question. Uh, can you? Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Susan. Tony, just remind us, I think I know the answer, but just remind us how the bonds get marketed. We become part of a package that goes to a much bigger that's, sale. That's, right? that's correct. So a, uh, what happens is um, an underwriter will probably acquire the bonds and they'll package it as part of a bigger issue to different clients. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, Tony, what, what's our current interest on the notes we have now on this property? It's um, two, and, uh, two and a quarter, two and a half, around there. I think two and a half. From two and a quarter to, to just over one and a quarter. What, a quarter okay. percent? A one yeah, point one four. point four is weighted, sort of the weighted. Yeah, because the taxable is 1.75, uh, 1.25 roughly. Or tax exempt, and you figure the tax exempt is two thirds, so it's probably around one. Mm -hmm. Right now they're two and a quarter, and the, and the um, but notes could change wildly based on the market. Uh, next year, who knows what could happen? Right. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Okay. okay, we have a motion. A second. I'm going to just call the, the vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Okay, it passes unanimously. All right, number three is funding requests. Uh, we have several, and a lot of them we've discussed already when it comes to contingency. So, uh, the first is a request for funding 1920 20 in the amount of $29,207. And this is to fund various departments for cost of living increase not included in the FY20 budget. Uh, union contracts sell after the budget is adopted. So we've, we've talked about this. This money was, it's less than I thought it was, and I think Tony can have an explanation. So uh, I'll make a motion that we approve request for funding 1920-20 in the amount of 29207 Second. 
expected. Tony. Just can explain why it's significantly less than usual. Right. So you'll, you'll notice that um, police department's not in here. Right. Not, it's not because there were several vacant positions throughout the year. So there was no need to transfer the cost of living adjustment for those that were here because they were vacant positions. Uh, so public works is a vacant mechanic position. So the vacancy paid up for the increase in cost of living in wages that you would have had to uh, transfer. Uh, same thing with the number of departments, the uh, registrar, the um, for the various reasons we mentioned earlier, yep. uh, library, rec, because there were a, a, a lot of wages that were, um, there were positions that were either eliminated or um, a lot of departments did not need a cost of living adjustment. Okay. Okay. Some of those numbers that you gave us in the beginning are after they cover these cost of living expenses. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Unanimous. Next is request for funding 1920-21. Again, we did talk about this. And it was uh, $10,000 to fund uh, cybersecurity related issues. I will move acceptance of funding 1920 21 in the amount of $10,000. Second. Any questions or comments on that? Yeah, so Tony, would this take care of the issues that we had? Yes. This is deductible. Are we anticipating more? Or no. Did it take care of it? Everything has been resolved. Okay, then I'll. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, Aye. any opposed? Any abstention? Okay. Pass. All right. Next is request for funding 1920-22 um, in the amount of 27000 This request is to fund the FY21 Woodbridge Board of Education capital budget technology request. That was eliminated from the budget in the anticipation of contingencies. So again, we talked about this. So I'll move acceptance of request for funding 1920-22 in the amount of $27,000. Second. Any discussion on this? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstention? Okay. Next is a request for funding 1920-23. Uh, again, this was something we took out of the uh, public works uh, budget and put it into work for this year so we could pay for it with contingency. So I'll move acceptance of request for funding 1920-23 in the amount of $40,000. Second. Any discussion? Speaker. Yeah, funds a uh, uh, yeah, funds forty thousand, right, Matt? Yeah, forty thousand. It funds a sweeper payment, a lease payment on a sweeper. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And finally, uh, this is the the police cars, which again we took out of next year's budget and paid them with this year's contingency. So I will I will approve, I will make a motion that we approve request for funding 1920-24 in the amount of $48,490. Second. Any discussion on this? Is this is this a uh, placement of a vehicle or is it I think it's two, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a replacement. Of a vehicle. Is it one vehicle or two, Tony? It's one because this is the last one, I believe, that has they have to change equipment. Oh, uh, okay. Because it's like an old, you know, style and they're going to run things. Okay. So this is an SUV? Yes. So are we now all SUVs or are there any squad cars? I think it's pretty much all SUVs now, if I understand it. That's pretty much countrywide, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? 
extensions. Okay. Uh, next, we have the um, expense list. Again, not the, the uh, repetitive, but this is by state statute. We have to move certain folded tax bills onto a suspense list, but the tax collector continues to aggressively pursue these. There's liens on, on real estate. There's, there's ways of collecting. So these never really go away. I'm sure some of them go away, but for the most part, these uh, continue to be pursued. It's just that we have to take them off uh, and put them on a suspense list based on state statute. So I will move acceptance of the suspense list presented by a tax collector uh, as presented. Second. Second. Any discussion on this? We're good. Well, let me just check I'm not on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you>. <laughs> uh, okay. All those in favor. So I'll support it. <laughs> All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Thank you. And that is that. Okay. All right. Next. Yeah. Uh, approval of minutes. Um, hang on a second. Second. I move the acceptance of the May 18 minutes. Okay. And, uh, I'll second that. Any corrections, adjustments, suggestions, anything at all? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abs any any nays? Any abstention? Okay. Next is Thursday, May 24th, which is our regular Board of Finance meeting. Uh, I'll move acceptance of the minutes of Thursday, May 21st, 2020, as presented. Any discussion, corrections, adjustments on these? Um, I think I had one correction. If I find it. Um, oh, I know what it is. At the very end, just before respectfully submitted, about four lines up, I noticed this one. Ellen thanks Matt. Well, it's not. It's just a typo. Ellen, Toy, and Karen. But I, I did mean Tony. Tony. Okay. That's a good name for you, Toy. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? I abstain because I was over there. Okay. All righty. First likeness report. Beth Heller. Uh, am I off mute? Can yeah. you hear me? I hear you. Thank you. Um, hopefully, first of all, you all received the letter I that you asked me to write uh, to Tony thanking him. I hope you all got a copy of that. And again, Tony, thank you on behalf of the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance. I did take care of that. Um, just an update, we had uh, several residents come forward that wanted to do a peaceful visit, vigil, not a visit, uh, and it went through last Saturday. And I don't know if you had a chance to attend, but it was quite moving, socially distancing for the most part, and um, everyone had masks, and it was lovely. And it is a start. Um, to uh, improving things in Woodbridge and in our country. So it was, it was a very lovely, very lovely event. And it went off. And I can't thank the police enough for their attendance and their participation on the sidelines and all the people. Um, three uh, Amity teams that to listen to their stories, it's amazing. Um, my, my speech paled in comparison to the things that they talked about. So it was lovely. Um, just so you guys know where we are as far as the town, um, um, all, on Monday, June 8th, all full-time staff began working on site. However, we still have not opened the doors to the public. Um, all town services are continuing to be done virtually, and we haven't really had any complaints. Everything's getting done, which is good. People have been uh, really working hard and working out well. We have a great and committed and dedicated staff here in Town Hall. Um, I think it was this past week, all of the uh, sports leagues opened up. So that's all revving up. If you see people playing in the fields again, we're good to go. Um, we opened up uh, the playgrounds and the athletic fields and the dog park opened, I think, yesterday. 
and it, it was everything was successful. Transfer station remains open for as long as people are wearing masks. Not, not really anything has changed up there. I just wanted to give you an update because the board selectman asked Pat Crisco about how the tax collection is going to work. Because some folks do like to stop in. Um, so Pat reported to the board selectman, and I will let you know what she said as well. That um, she's encouraging residents to mail their checks to the property building if possible. If not, uh, Pat and Linda in the tax office are going to be able to provide access for those residents who wish to pay in person. There's always a few. And um, they're available on the front porch of Town Hall at a window. If you look at the front of Town Hall, to the right, there's a window behind the bench. And Brad has set up a table, uh, or it looks like actually a podium with a chair. And he'll take the screen off, and people will be able to pass their money through a window there. So I thought that was a clever, clever idea on Brad's part, and we'll be safe, safely distancing. And the window is going to be open um, Monday through Friday, beginning July 1st from 9 a.m. to noon, and then again from 1 to 3. That's, I guess, for the listening public as well as you guys. And um, I have the latest statistics, and I'll give you that in a minute from Ray. Um, we also, just so you guys know, we had a, um, a an executive session to go over the Amity Woodbridge Historical Society slash Town of Woodbridge contract, and we have an agreement that has now been approved by the Board of Selectmen consensus-wise, and it's on its way to the Amity Historical Society. We hope to get that moving forward and we can get back to business down there. And now I will get my phone up and give you the latest statistics from Ray. I apologize, it went to sleep. But um, as of as of June 12th, 2020, from the Quinnipiac Valley Health Database, totally confirmed cases of COVID-19 are 129. Total deaths are 31. The extended care facilities comprise 112 of those totals. And the extended facilities deaths are 24. There is a note that says this may, may not be exact based on supporting agencies' information at the time of death. So that's the latest from Ray. And I think that's pretty much what I have. And I can't think of anything else, just business as usual, and it's going well. Well, thank you. Would it be possible to uh, suggest to the tax collector that, I mean, I don't trust the mail. I've mailed things across town to take weeks. Um, would it be possible? I don't have to come in, but it would be possible maybe to have a drop box or something where you could drop it off in, in an envelope and, and know at least you got it to the town hall. You know, I mean, if by chance it gets lost in the mail, you know, you're looking at a 3% amount of money. So I don't know. Um, I don't have to come in, but I, mail, mail and I don't ex is exciting. So we, we had the, um, the hours at the, you know, we're, we're a little leery about the drop box because some people actually pay in cash. Oh, um, really? Wow. Believe it or not, some people pay in cash, and so we're a little leery about having a drop box where. Right, so it's, and it's not a big deal to go to the window. Yeah, and, and uh, they're there um, four or five hours a day, I think. Nine, nine to 12 and one to three, so that's five hours, which is fine, you know. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, a question. Uh, you mentioned uh, the number of total deaths in Woodbridge for 31 COVID related. Uh, that's according to Ray, yes. Oh, 24 of those were in the uh, assisted living and nursing, nursing home? He says, uh, let me just get back here to this. Um, <coughs> Jeepers. I'm not, sorry. Um, extended facilities, 112 out of 129 total. Total deaths were 31, and the total, the total extended care facility deaths were 24 out of 31. These are from Ray Stewart, not me. Okay. And then uh, you had mentioned that are, is everyone back to, to uh, the town offices, or is that mm -hmm. employees are back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Town hall is completely. Will you be opening town hall to the public, or no, not at this point. We'll see how this goes. Okay. If it goes well, perhaps. <clears throat> okay, anything else? Thank you, Matt. Okay. And finally, liaison reports. Um, I had a, we had an Amity meeting uh, a week ago Monday. Um, <laughs> needless to say, the, um, with the closings and all the stuff that went on, the surplus 
grew to two million eight hundred and seventy one thousand three hundred and seven dollars of which they decided to spend one billion seven hundred and thirty five thousand three hundred and thirty one and I'll go through all this with you and leaving a surplus uh, million one thirty five nine seventy six which they will return to the towns which could grow okay uh, it wasn't met with um, wasn't met with me from the members of the uh, finance committee <laughs> but some of the areas where they saved money uh, which caused this tremendous uptick in the uh, in the surplus were of course salaries and taxes transportation um, medical huge huge people don't go to the doctors anymore I mean they had they have a budget of like 360,000 of which they usually you know fairly close in 10 one month and 20 another month so the doctors so we had a contingency fund of 150,000 so a roughly was uh, not spent uh, because of the uh, shutdown um, next. What they decided to, well, what they proposed to use the money for were many things. A lot of the stuff that was cut out of their budget um, because of reducing it down to 2.49 from 3.95, of which small, a lot of small items, 457,000, and infrastructure repairs, 367,000. Uh, computers for teachers, 132,000. Thermal cameras, 40,000. Um, cafeteria, 100,000, uh, which they have to put in. Unemployment, and here's that, that figure. They had to pay their own unemployment, uh, 101,400. In addition, they've decided this year, which is something they can do, to hold 1% of capital and non recurring, for capital and non recurring which is $495,482. And one other item, which was a lot of discussion, was they to increase their medical reserve from 25, they're self-insured, from 25% to 30%, which was 229,311. Now, you know, a lot of this stuff was discussed and um, not, not necessarily favorably looked on, but in the end, the, the uh, 229,000 from the medical reserve, we decided the three members of the three town members on the committee and one board member voted not to do that. They thought that was excessive to have 30% in reserve. So that would have added 229,000 to the surplus return of the towns. But unbelievably, uh, when the Board of Education met, they completely ignored the finance committee's recommendation, which did not sit well with me. Uh, nor the uh, John Grabowski from Bethany or Joe Bezo from Orange. And so I don't know where that's going to end. But, you know, you have us on there for a reason. And, and to just, you know, you, you got every now and then you got to lose a skirmish to win the war. And they didn't lose a skirmish. They, they took everything. And it didn't go over well with a lot of people. But I haven't heard from Jim Zioli. I haven't heard from the Orange Board of Finance. I haven't heard from anybody. But, I have a feeling there's going to be a bit of an uproar uh, that they spent all this money. And um, we'll see. I don't, I don't believe it's cast in stone. I think it can be changed, but um, thus far I haven't heard anything. It was not it was not looked well that they completely ignored us. Again, it wasn't three to three. It was four to two because one member of the, um, and he's a former chairman of the board, one member of the Amity uh, Finance Committee was, um, uh, on, on with us, so he, he voted against it too. So, but unfortunately, they decided to. Uh, and I think it's a total over overkill. They're they're making the argument that well, if um, it's only 125 this month, but then, uh, Johnny Jones didn't get a physical, so he'll get a physical, and you're not going to get two physicals. They're, they're saying that people are going to double up. That's not going to happen. So we, we gave them every reasonable, and, and this has been a constant life. Uh, loading up this medical reserve and 30 percent admitting anyway is um is, is excessive and, and for the other people who spoke against it so that's where we're at and at this point we're getting back 30 percent of a million whatever i told you 30 percent of a million 135 hopefully that number will grow as we get closer to the end of the year and hopefully they'll give it back to us 
Uh, if not, I'm afraid there's going to be some um, uh, unhappy people. So that's it for Andy. Um, let's see, I don't know where to go. Paul, do you have anything? Any questions for me, actually? Okay. Hey, Matt, I just want to mention that Ellen said, no one said she had to uh, leave the meeting. She was having some audio difficulties, and so she sends her apologies. Okay. 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 Yeah. Cool. Well, I, I do have a question, Matt. Uh, yeah. Their decision to, to go from 25% to 30% for their uh, medical reserve, is that based on some experience that they had larger than no, they have usual claims? Or? They've never come in. They've never. They've never. I think one year maybe they, they when they were first starting and it was lower than that. So this was the, uh, the, they have a consultant who recommended they go to 30% and they just go right along with them. And I said, you know, this has been going on for years. Just keep padding it and padding it and padding it. 30% is ridiculous. And um, one, one other member of the uh, Woodbridge contingency uh, also spoke against it in, in the Board of Education meeting. Uh, she's not on, she's not on our uh, committee, but it fell on deaf ears, unfortunately. Was, you know, the chairman of the AMD Board of Education voted against it. Um, uh, the, same, the former chairman voted against it. Uh, quite a few people voted against it, but not enough to overcome the people who voted for it. So, I'm not happy at all. I, I will make I will make it known at the next meeting. Right. Right. Okay. You ready? Thanks, man. Yep. Do you have anything, Paul? Yeah. Uh, the Board of Police Commissioners met on June 9th. Um, we have a uh, dispatcher, um, dispatcher Zipkus. Um, he, uh, after many years with the town, he's decided to uh, retire. So his last day um, will be June 23rd, um, uh, but he's also taking some paid time off. So I think he'll be retiring officially uh, July 1st. Um, that kind of puts us in a, in a, a difficult position because um, we're waiting on a certification for a dispatcher trainee and she has not been able to get her um, certification because of the uh, COVID-19 delays in the state has not been uh, doing certification. So it may be some time before we have a full complement of dispatchers. Um, the chief is looking at hiring um, a pre-certified um, person, um, but the discussion in the, in the commission was more that, look, um, the fact that someone can decide to retire um, and the decision comes in two weeks, it, when it's an essential person, when it's an essential role, it puts the town in a bit of a bind. Um, so the, the commission asked the chief, and, and I think maybe we should adopt some policy uh, in the town for town staff in general, that we need um, we need a, a little bit more notice, uh, maybe six weeks or eight weeks, because town policy is that when a person retires or a position becomes open, we have to post that position internally so that any current town employee can, can apply for that job. So that means we have to post it internally and then uh, go outside and hire somebody um, and, and post it externally after the two weeks is what I mean. Um, so that may create problems for other essential um, roles that we have to fill. So uh, this is something we probably need to think about, um, Paul, Tony. Question? Yeah. So we have to post internally for a physician that is a specialized physician for special training, you have to do that internally first? Is it a union contract requirement that you have to give opportunities? Uh, you have to give members of the bargaining unit opportunity first. They still have to be qualified. They still have to pass all the qualifications, but you have to give the uh, bargaining unit members first preference, then you go externally. I think it's 10 days. So, Ten days. So, so, I guess so the dispatcher, right? So you would think 
there aren't going to be other people who are dispatcher trained internally, or maybe are there? I guess I'm just confused by why we would have to go internally for a position that is has to be a certified position. Just simply because it's a union contract requirement for all positions. Sorry. Sometimes, well, yeah. sometimes yeah. that happens if it's public works or oh, yes. clerical. Right, but I can see clerical. Yeah. You don't have to be certified clerical. But you have to be certified as a dispatcher and a trained dispatcher, right? Or maybe I'm misunderstanding. Well, I mean, it could be a designation that's made in the next contract, certainly. But for now, contract doesn't make a distinction between the dispatch position and the other position. Right. So, Tony, do we have any do we have any flexibility in in asking people that are retiring to give us um, more notice? So generally, Paul, the way that works is the department head usually creates a relationship with their employees so that if there's retirement coming, you know in enough time so that you can, you know, plan for it. Okay. okay, but to set a formal policy, that, that's uh I'm not sure if we can. Right, right. Okay. Uh, we do have, Tom, just to let you know, we do have an, um, a, one of our employees was a former dispatcher. So, really? Yeah. So, I'm not saying this person's going to apply, but, you know, there, it does happen on occasion. So, right. So, could we, could we assume that at some point we may be down two dispatchers? Well, we're currently at four, and we have a trainee waiting on certification. Right. So, we have a trainee waiting. So, I don't think we're going to go down to two. Not. So we have a trainee. Who has not been able to get trained because of the COVID? And we have to no, she, no. She has completed her training. She is waiting on her certification, which has not come through because of uh, because of delays in the in the state certification process caused by COVID nineteen. Right. So then we have someone who retires. Who's retiring in two weeks? Right. So those are two positions that could potentially not be could be vacant. They're going to be down to four. They're going to be down to four, and they're, they're normally supposed to have six. No, they're, they're, they'll have five. Yeah. Yeah. So if this, if this, five. this other person passes to get certified. She's trained. She can be a dispatcher. She's oh. just not certified as a dispatcher, which I believe means she can't be by herself, correct? Right. That's correct. Right. That's all it means. Right. She has to have two dispatchers when she's there, but she can work. So we really have when when Joe retires in a couple of weeks, there are there are five. So we're down one. Correct. We will be correct. But we'll have to have two on when the new one is working until that dispatcher gets their certification. Which new one? That, that, the current new one or the new new one? <laughs> the that's current that's new one will hopefully get certified soon, and then it will be five able to work alone, and then there'll be a new one that's hired. That has to work with someone. Until she gets certified, trained and certified, correct. That's what I was saying, so. Right. So we're, Is that right, Tony? Yes. Yeah, okay. That's right. Okay. Paul, you want that, Paul? Um, uh, well, uh, I just want to re report to you also that we are currently at 23 officers um uh, with the sros back from both schools both teacher and amity so we're at 23 uh sworn officers on the police department okay and i think and i think that concludes everything yeah it's going to be interesting uh i've noticed reading i'm reading more and more of schools not wanting sros anymore they don't want right I don't want guys with guns in the school, so that's going to be interesting to see where that ends. Well, okay. Um, let's get the right time. Term can affect. Yeah, no. um, um, I haven't been to any of the, uh, I was able to make the human uh, services, but I didn't have to be keeping us all up to date. We all get emails, so I'm not going to hurt everyone with uh, repeating all the emails, but they're doing a great job. And services are being performed. Everybody seems to be they seem to be doing very well. Okay. And uh, I was not able to make the board of uh, the board of ed meeting, but uh, I'll report on that. Okay.
Okay. Susan. I do not have a report. Okay. Do um, you want some dinner? Yeah, sure. I'm hungry. Yeah, he's good. Sorry about that. It's noisy in the background. People are talking. I apologize for that. But spaghetti is available for anyone who wants it. Just come on by. I'll be right over. <laughs> the beauties of these virtual meetings, yes. Um, you realize we are live on TV to camera land. So you may have a whole pile of people at your house. There we go. As long as they practice social distancing, we'll be fine. Um, sorry about that. So I was at the Board of Finance, Board of Ed Finance meeting on uh, June 11th. Um, as Matt had said, that they, like Amity, they have an increase in the amount of uh, surplus um, increase from the May when they reported 108, now 186,000. Um, they are returning, uh, I think, 95,000 right now, using the others for uh, unanticipated costs. Um, mostly related to um, some of the COVID stuff. Um, as we expected, a lot of the um, um, surplus came from savings and transportation um, and in uh, some of the special ed outplacements that they didn't have to do. Um, the bulk of the meeting was talking about their plan to, uh, to let go the part I'm social worker and to hire a new psychologist to help with the, um, the special ed um, IEPs. Um, there was a long discussion about that, um, but that's still the plan. Um, and things are going uh, along as we uh, as before. So that was really sort of the gist of that meeting. Okay. okay. Is there anything else to come before the board? Just spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Uh, have a great Fourth of July. If there's anything you can do, but uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you in July sometime. Keep safe, everybody. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.